Good evening, friends. My name is Swapnil Manish, and uh, this is our uh, talk loudest episode number seven. Uh, today, we are going to tackle, uh, you know, in, in the wider context of uh, corporate India and gender stereotypes, on which we recently held uh, uh, held an FCT. Uh, we are going to today discuss a very specific provision uh, surrounding sexual harassment. Uh, and, and you know the laws, uh, law surrounding it in India, uh, which governs uh, prevention and redressal of sexual harassment uh, in India, uh, as per the laws. And we'll also try and bust uh, some common myths around it. So joining me today is is the founder of Ungender, uh, Pallavi Pratik. Uh, Pallavi uh, has has is the founder, as I said, of Ungender, which helps organizations you know set up. Uh, ICCs, you know, uh, provides training programs towards gender sensitization, etc., and you know, towards prevention of sexual harassment. Uh, so I will just, uh, you know, uh, I will just add Pallavi to this uh, to this uh, video. So while we wait for Pallavi, uh, so you know. Guys, we, we did uh, also organize a talk loudest previously. Uh, that was also on the uh, on the wider topic of corporate India and gender stereotypes. Hi, Pallavi. How are you doing? Hi, Swapnil. Doing good. Oh, so good to see you. Uh, yes. So, <laughs> yes. Uh, so, in fact, uh, so I was just uh, telling our uh, viewers, you know, how we uh, held our previous FCT on on you know corporate India and gender stereotypes. And Pallavi, you were part of that, and you know you you would understand more than anybody else, given your work in this space. Uh, that uh, we've obviously covered the wider umbrella topic, and today we want to cover a, a, a segment which is very important, which uh, which which you know which this all these smaller segments uh, you know help build towards you know uh, make a gen uh, making gender uh, stereotypes less visible, less distinct in corporate India. Hence, the conversations around around those are very important. Uh, so, thank you so much for joining in. First of all, uh, uh, so I will start off by just giving a bit of background on what uh, you know. Posh is you know Posh is Prevention mm -hmm. of uh, Sexual Harassment Act, and this is just for our viewers. Obviously, uh, Pallavi, you are being the you being the expert here. Uh, so you know, so so Posh is actually an act which was instituted. It's a legislative act by the government of India in 2012-2013, uh, passed by both the, both the uh, you know Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha, and uh, this uh, this obviously uh, superseded the previous Visakha Get guidelines, which were put in place by the Supreme Court, and uh, uh, the Act specifically uh, addressed the topics of prevention and uh, uh, you know redressal of, of women in workplaces. And uh, now, because this is now a legislative act, you know, employers are have to, you know, follow a certain set of guidelines uh, in order to, you know, uh, prevent uh, prevent such things. But we would want to hear from you, uh, Pallavi, a little more on Posh Act. Why don't you tell our viewers? I mean, there are there are multiple, uh, you know, there is a lot of confusion that people have. You know, a lot of employees uh, working in organizations, you know, Indian as well as MNCs. Uh, they they do have uh, this this confusion whether this posh act is only for women you know uh, so so where do women if if it indeed is the case then where do men take their mm. payments and what exactly is posh you know what is an icc could you throw some more light on it pallavi all right thanks for the brief introduction swapnil it's uh, it's uh, actually more or less you rightly captured what's the general understanding uh, you know considering the kind of uh, information that we receive and also there's so much information that is floating around in today's world right and uh, uh, then it's up to the person who is uh, consuming it to identify whether uh, whether there is any fact also into it i'm not even talking about the truth side but what exactly are the facts of a specific one uh, so for this one yes definitely like as the name goes Right, it's a sexual harassment of women at workplace act of 2013, which, which is uh, by its own name clearly states that we are dealing with a very specific gender segment here, uh, that is women. But at the same time, it also has three more very keywords 
attached with it, which is prevention, prohibition, and redressal, which sure. primarily says uh, or you know allows us to have a deeper understanding of it that uh, not only this law which has now come into picture for uh, any entity in any location irrespective of the team size irrespective of the legal identity you know legal uh, uh, legal status that they have uh, needs to now start taking care of three things which is one ensuring that uh, the employer or whoever is the main person who is promoting that specific entity is now legally obligated to ensure that preventive measures are put in place so you don't have to wait for something to happen and uh, then just provide the redressal around sure. it but you have to be able to predict so yeah. in a sense law is saying that if you know how to run something if you know how to run a business if you know how to build a business if you know how to make Absolutely. money now here's one more responsibility on you as the promoter or the employer of that particular entity which says that if there are women associated with your workplace then now you are legally obligated to think about the preventive ways of how many ways or in different forms that specific woman can be uh, you know uh, sexually harassed and yeah. uh, it's your responsibility to sit and identify those things considering the uh, considering the industry that you are operating in and the workplace environment that you have second yeah. thing is the prohibition part it says that you not only have to identify second then now you have to make sure that people understand so you yeah. have to also communicate it to your uh, you know employees and individuals who are associated with your uh, entity to let them know that this specific kind of behavior is now prohibited and will actually call for severe consequences severe con exactly. which will be associated with it and yeah. that's the prohibition part which i mean look at the look at the irony of it that uh, we have to now tell people <laughs> in workplaces we are talking about grown ups we are talking about the uh, so called professionals who are good at whatever job that they do but the, we do as a country needed a law that said that even if these people are very good at whatever job that they are doing the gender norms are or the gender uh, stereotypes has extended to the workplace environment also and we do need to now tell people what to do and what not to do when they are interacting with women in the workplace mm -hmm. environment so, so what exactly is sexual harassment right so what would comprise a sexual harassment that's something also i want you to you know throw some light on i will but can i just finish which is the most amazing thing that this law has introduced that earlier considering the kind of uh, uh, instances and the kind of experiences that a woman used to have because yeah. there was a dearth of job opportunities and uh, uh, it used to take so much struggle to actually land with a job only and even then yeah. you will see women in very specific sectors and they're also in very specific functions also maybe right. hr and you know as an admin assistant and whichever is the job profile which will provide them less travel and less interaction with the outside yes. world but a safe you know safe, yeah, the, the confines, confines of the office walls exactly absolutely right so this limited role so even if there were experiences and women were either continuing with the same role or yeah. you know dropping out of the employment sector the 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 reason why they would not bring it out is because an employer will not be able to understand these nuances of what it means or how the experience of a woman is in all these things and second the other redress and mechanisms we had were either you go to the police or you go to the you know uh, you go to the court but yeah. uh, going to the court for something that someone has been uh, pestering you at late night calls is not something that the court uh, you know or the system will actually look at from a very serious uh, uh, manner because the kind of cases that actually goes to police are extreme level of there course, when we use course. the word sexual harassment the understanding is very different okay um, we, right so we we don't really look at these uh, subtle forms of harassment as hmm. something which is very serious and that's yeah. why this law says that now in a company there has to be an internal body of people who will be now responsible and accountable to accept concerns and complaints of sexual harassment and do a thorough investigation which has its own guiding principles so there's a very detailed mechanism of investigation that is also provided and that's what completes this uh, you know the essence of this uh, law for uh, workplaces yeah yeah i understand 
So, uh, so, but so there are two things. So you, you're talking about, uh, I believe you're talking about an internal complaints committee, which is which is right. an ICC. Uh, but what happens? I mean, uh, from what I understand, uh, you, this is obviously uh, employers. Who, you know. It, uh, who, who have more than 10 employees at a certain branch or a certain office, they are obligated to have an ICC. Uh, so I have two questions there. So one is, what about employers who are under 10, you know, who, who employ less than 10 employees? So that's one. And uh, secondly, uh, you know, are, there, uh, are they accountable? How, accountable how, how, how does the law hold this ICC accountable? I mean, how? Hmm. So first thing, uh, wherein you said that yes, uh, the, uh, the the need for having an ICC in any company or any entity uh, gets activated when you have more than uh, uh, ten people in a team, and uh, that's when you need to have a ICC in place, an internal committee in place. Yeah, I'll just yeah. add one more element to it because uh, let's also address the misconceptions or you know the lack of information that people generally have. That it's not just about one company, right? Uh, even in a company, even in an organization, if you have more than one location where you have 10 or more people, then you actually need a separate location-specific committee for that. Sure. And uh, that's also something that is uh, very integral to what this law has demanded workplaces right. to do. Right. But right. Uh, uh, going back to the question wherein what happens when there are uh, less than 10 people? Now, in those cases, we have another uh, entity which has been introduced by this law called the Local Complaints Committee. These right. committees uh, exist in uh, every district uh, appointed by the district officers who further are appointed by the state departments also. Okay. And uh, these are the committees who are required who are given the responsibility to look into the complaints that come from uh, workplaces which have less than 10 people and thereby do not have an internal yeah. committee. And second, under. So women who don't have a dedicated workspace or an employer that they can actually refer to. Uh, okay. These are the two places where uh, local complaints committee will again. Uh, the problem is that to identify one, there's uh, not that much information about uh, where these local complaints committees are. And uh, we will, it will be very difficult to find that information even on the state government's websites. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, second is uh, where to find them. So even if yes, you know course. where these people are, uh, you will find it how do you connect to them? actually reach out to them. Yes. And that's the operational side of, uh, you know, how law still is a work in progress. And it's still sure. identifying how to make the system that it has introduced work yeah. on the ground as well. Of course. So, and, uh, you know, uh, so I'm just going back to something that, you know, something very basic. And, you know, one of our, uh, uh, you know, view viewers also raised the same question. Yes, I saw that. <laughs> exactly is sexual harassment i mean some uh, you know there is obviously some basic understanding you know if you can't obviously touch it appropriately for example which will constitute a sexual harassment but what about i mean are there other things what exactly would constitute would, would a harmless joke for example a harmless sexist a harmless joke which somebody classifies as sexist no no sexist joke is harmless Swapnil. Yeah. so that yeah. that is the so thing I, right People want to, you know, they, they, a lot of people consider jokes as harmless, you know. Hey, come on, it's just fun. Would that constitute sexual harassment under the Act? I mean, that's something that, you know, is very important to understand. I think we have uh, stretched the gender-related and uh, sexist jokes uh, to an extent wherein they have become very normal part of our lives. Um, just taking... Uh, cue from, you know, you saying that a harmless sexist joke. So first and foremost, no, jo no joke which is sexist is actually harmless. Sure. Right? Because somewhere it has tried finding humor in uh, someone's gender. And Sexism. the way exactly. that gender has been stereotyped. Now, yeah. where that stereotype is coming from is uh, usually very personal and integral to a person. So Absolutely. when we crack a joke on a, uh, on a female colleague saying that she is so cranky, maybe she is PMSing. You know, this, this, this same line can be said in a very sensitive and a very understandable manner. But if the same statement is said and there are four people laughing or two people laughing, laughing uh, then, then what exactly is the kind of humor that we are, uh, you know, uh, including as part of a company's culture? 
and we as a society for generations have been trying to address normalize it and Absolutely. take away right we have been trying to address we know that these things exist if uh, women are very sensitive women are very emotional women cry easily women don't know how to be a strong leader and this is this categorization and this stereotyping because after some time it's difficult to say the same thing again and again in an angry oh, yes. or declarative manner this has turned into humor the sexist humor that now we say uh, that exactly. uh, that's that's when people say it's just a joke yeah, you know? i know exactly but then, i know but then that way if we look around in the society it's just a song then then it's just a movie it's just a joke it's just exactly. a one project it's just one question uh, if everything is this just this just has actually become this uh, big uh, big uh, you know a uh, big uh, black cloud over yeah. uh, how each and every woman is understood the minute uh, she behaves in any certain manner i mean if you will look at it it's not happening from the other side right i have actually not heard and uh, correct me you and even our audience at least from my years of experience i can say uh, we don't have that many success jokes when it comes to men from the other side so oh, yes. so you don't have a cloud hanging on your head uh, defining Oh yes, there is a power equation which which dictates all that clearly, and and you know, so so yeah, the the uh, so fr- just strictly from the perspective of sexual harassment as as defined under this act, you know, could this could such lewd remarks, could mm-hmm. could uh, you know, sexist jokes, could they come under the definition of sexual harassment? Do would look like. Palavi, you there? Yeah. I'm there. I'm there. I'm here. Yes. So, so you know, would these uh, would these jokes, you know, would these sexist jokes, would they come under the definition of sexual harassment as as defined by this law? Absolutely. There's just no there's no grayness about this. We have these conversations and arguments and debates in our sessions all the time, where yeah. one side is actually uh, defending. that uh, these these are jokes that uh, are happening everywhere now Absolutely. just because these jokes are happening everywhere does not really make it right also right so uh, we not. understand the power of collective or uh, we all, we understand the power of consensus here right a uh, uh, collective consensus but uh, at the same time just because the majority is doing it does not really define it as a does right not make it right doing thing absolutely right absolutely. and at the end of the day we have to understand that uh, what is exactly is it that the law is uh, preventing also or is exactly. actually trying to address is that when we keep talking about a specific gender when we ca- keep talking about women in a specific manner that means somewhere this is part of how our, our subconscious that yeah. also means that this subconscious is also ruling or somewhere becoming one of the variables in how we will be treating them as our colleagues or as our boss or as someone who is going to become part of our team member and yeah. with this lens of stereotyping and with this lens of uh, be it humor or be it uh, just uh, Any, know, prejudice uh, stereotype, any prejudice behavior any prejudice behavior as long as this lens exists your decision as an individual will always govern how things should work out what kind of opportunities should be given to that woman and yeah. how you should be treating that woman in your workplace yeah and that yeah. is what the you know uh, that the law is trying to address or aiming to eliminate from workplaces that's why right. there is also a very strong component of you know awareness sessions and sensitization sessions uh, that it's not just that you create a policy and then you tell people that from today onwards you will not be doing this it very well understands that people now need to be sat down in a classroom and they need to now be told and uh, like you were saying a while ago a lot of people actually look at it as a very uh, uh, harmless thing uh, yeah. for them a lot of people they, become, harmless was in you know inverted commas as you can put it you know so a lot of people will say hey it's it's harmless i mean i i can see a viewer uh, you know putting in a very relevant point you know two two buddies cracking a sexist joke can offend me as, even as a bystander and even if that joke is is not about me and th- their intent may not have been to harass me but they're creating Absolutely. an extremely uncomfortable working environment which is one of the one of the key things which which But this act also addresses yeah hostile working right. environment right 
absolutely so the see uh, another thing that people do not know is that this joke need not be directed at me or this joke yeah. or these comments or these conversations need not be uh, need not have happened directly with me as an audience but yeah. even if it is something that i uh, you know i i witness or i come across with other people doing yeah. this is still a thought process that is part of the yeah. workplace environment and yeah. if it exists then i need to raise a concern about it because tomorrow if tomorrow uh, today they are thinking about it not in front of me and joking about it or speaking like this but uh, tomorrow uh, their thought process can actually affect the way my career will be seen in this organization and nothing Mark, exists in absolutely. pure humor no no not at all i mean we 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 uh, you know for long normalized a lot of that prejudice in the form of uh, humor and that's actually uh from from my own experience that's one of the worst form of uh, forms of you know normalization i mean j- joke normalizes it absolutely immediately you know a prejudice behavior you know you can laugh, laugh it off and you know it becomes normalized it becomes you know a, a part of you and and you know that that is even worse as compared to a hostile kind of a, you know a situation absolutely um so you know i'm just I, I, there are there are obviously you know questions in in people's minds you know there are you know even <coughs> questions that were raised around you know you know men male employees uh, have have certain questions uh, you know in their minds uh, there are certain uh, th- th- there are such certain things that they are confused about same with the f- female employees a lot of them have not been properly trained I and mean, you you set up a lot of these training sessions for uh, right. companies so you would know that you know companies are still struggling to you know put a proper training mechanism in place to, to properly sensitize their own people a lot of uh, companies don't even even today have an icc i mean from from what i yes, uh, from, absolutely from right uh, one fourth of the companies don't even have, have an icc i mean the ones more that than should that. have more than that more than that more than that see our data is based on uh, researches and surveys done by Survey. mostly industry bodies yeah. and uh, industry bodies at least this is we are talking about organized sector and very specific sectors also right so for example if yeah, nascom yeah. has done something it would have done it for its industry members right yeah. they are also if nascom says that okay this percentage of 40 or 45 or 60% of people or companies have not uh, you know complied with Instituted. that's still yeah. a very that's still a very small data that we are dealing with and we have not it's even started small, talking uh, about it's not it's we've not talked about the sme and the unregulated sector at all because absolutely uh, this really covers everything it's it's much more yes. uh, wide ranging as compared to the visaka guidelines from what i understand uh, so a lot of lot of women you know uh, what we come across uh, you know they, they 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 would feel that uh, so in one of the audience members raised it also and you know you've addressed mm-hmm. it that you know if a person if a woman uh, if a female employee she's feeling uncomfortable at, at work because of the environment uh, is, is that does that constitute harassment is it is it because of a group of people who are making it very uncomfortable uh, for her to work and you know this is something that uh, you know even i've heard from my female friends you know they 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 traveling in a cab together to get to office and you you have a group of men uh, cracking jokes or you know they, you know making it very very uncomfortable very very hostile so uh, so how do i complain you know what do i do about it yeah, that's that's a question with a lot a lot of uh, you know female uh, employees uh, have in their mind so what, what do they do what what do they do what's the redress to such such uh, situations see first and foremost couple of things that we need to understand uh, when it comes to raising a complaint is uh, um you need to identify um that there is or there's supposed to be an internal committee in place right yeah. now going back to what you were just sharing a while ago a lot of companies uh, even if they have an internal committee they have not really shared about it right. um or the, they have not really put up the notices they have not sent out the emails and so on and so forth so right. if any individual is aware that there is an internal committee in place then you approach directly to them and yeah. uh, you need to include couple of details there like the individuals uh, you know who against whom you want to raise the concern um uh, the the details the detailed version of the conversation or the incident that you would like to bring forward um also any witnesses if you have or if you at that time they were around any form of evidence that you can provide because sometimes we have seen that if something has, some incident has happened let's say in an offsite event or uh, in a networking event or in a hotel lobby and so on and yes. so forth uh, yeah. and it becomes a converse- it, it becomes a case of he said she said 
in order to avoid that we also keep educating people that uh, you know you you can provide and pull off evidences there must be some security cameras which must be recording it and so you also have to ic also has to guide the person on it but uh, for the sake of everyone else who is watching this and will be watching this you should also know that if there is any possible evidence even if you do not have it in your power to retrieve it uh, you can also at least mention it to the point ic point point it out yeah point it out exactly. and then ic will facilitate because as an internal uh, as a you know as an equivalent of uh, an internal civil court body ic yeah. does have a lot of powers that they can execute to claim or you know to retrieve this kind of information and sure. then you approach the committee now most of the time what happens is there is the very incomplete details in the complaint which are there that is where uh, ic needs to go back to the complainant and read need or from the woman and uh, take more details from her before passing it on to the accused or the person against whom the complaint has uh, been raised right. in cases where there are no ic you know that's when it becomes more technical we do receive a lot of concerns from individuals who raise reach out to us that something hmm. like this has happened and uh, i don't know whether there is an ic or not and uh, uh, even if there is uh, i'm not sure if they you know if uh, if they will listen to things or not so that's exactly. when we tell them which which happens in a lot of cases that uh, 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 these committees will absolutely like you know be very laxed about it that's where i say that the lack of training and lack of understanding from them employer's perspective is uh, lacking a lot yeah. because they don't really know the consequences of not adhering to the specific law which is becoming more and more important considering the number of times that we keep hearing the word me too and sexual harassment in of today's course. media of course right so what we tell these women is that uh, they should uh, write to the employer of the company and uh, raise this concern we actually have a very nice draft wherein very politely we mention uh, the rights of the okay. woman as a workplace uh, you know associate okay. of that particular entity and yeah. uh, educating the employer using the first opportunity to educate the employer that uh, you should be having so and so things mechanism is in place because the law requires you to do that the law requires and you to do that. Uh, Yep. and then we wait for the employer to actually take action constitute the committee and uh, uh, from a from a from an advisory role we have had a lot of companies who have actually got an activated uh, after receiving such complaints or such yeah. emails from uh, their people that uh, oh we need to have a committee in place yeah. and we actually need to do this so overnight so why, we have come up with a committee why is it a case where you know employers themselves are less aware of something like this because this is this act even today so it's already 6 years old right and even then you have a lot of companies not constituting it uh, you know not not putting putting measures in place uh, are the you know uh, is the punishment under the law for not not having something like this is it very lax is it something that you know uh, is not such a deterrent why is it why 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 in your view is that the case why in such more employee <laughs> more employers taking it more seriously let's look at the two kind of punishments that exist when you are yeah. not complying with this law first one is what the law has actually created for you on right. your first offense of uh, being found out that you have been non compliant and you're not able yeah. to do it there is a fine of up to 50000 rupees which is right. nothing the minute right. you say up to 50000 rupees which is nothing right this is 50000 rupees yeah <laughs> right and uh, right and on second uh, instance of non violation that there is a double the fine hmm. okay which can be max to max a lakh a lakh okay. rupees yeah right now if ever the promoter or the employer group themselves are found to be uh, guilty of sexual harassment uh, you know conduct this conduct then there is a cancellation of business license and so on and so forth right but in order more, to activate like, this yeah. right but we need to understand that in order to get these any of these three levels it needs to come from the district officer hmm. right a district okay. officer is given the responsibility to ensure that uh, these things uh, you know are conducted in a manner that the law has designed right. now most of the because we have done a lot of rti and you know uh, work around the government side of uh, how the law has been implemented yeah. uh, the district officers most of them majority of them were not yeah. even uh, appointed up to you know 2 years ago okay okay and uh, those who have been appointed most of them do not even know or have undergone what exactly are their areas of responsibility mm -hmm. okay right and that's why companies when you go and tell them 
they are also seeking advice from somebody you know some yeah. legal expert right yeah. and the way we have understood how the legal system works in this country they mm-hmm. also know that it's a very far fetched thing that someone will go to the district officer then that person will understand what exactly is the violation about and then there will right. be a notice that will be sent and then maybe they will have to pay a fine of what 20000 30000 because the maximum yeah. fine that you can have is 50000 right. right that's what we are talking about from the way the law has designed now the second kind of punishment that happens is what the uh, what comes for your brand yeah right which is where if someone will go and write a social media post about you or if someone will go and directly take your company to a court and on now for both these two things to happen thank- thankfully the first one has become very easy convenient to do because uh, uh, media reach and the amazing me too movement that our country has been seeing uh, that has still created a little bit of scare in the companies the second one going to the court it's still very rare the very reason why this law came into picture and why it is very much prevalent or relevant is because how many women will actually take the company to the court wherein women are still dealing with finding a good legal recourse or finding a good legal advisor and then uh, you know having that kind of money to pursue this litigation yeah. so when is the pressing factor there is a pressing factor in fact uh, so do you think i mean speaking of that in fact uh, you know one of our viewers raised this point when I mean, do you think the, the the i mean people's faith in the entire process have 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 shaken up because of the recent uh, you know cji case i mean the way it was handled yes. not, you 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 do think that it wasn't handled the way it should have been at least you know in terms of how you know complainants uh, you know complaint should have been taken on board etc what what's what's your view on that um uh, see view is very simple uh when some good so two, two two views here right first view is yes um from the highest uh, you know judiciary power judiciary we have in this country um if their the system or the processes are not followed it uh, it does send a very strong signal to the common people right at the end of the day if uh, we did not even get the opportunity to see through the matter and assess whether the case was uh, genuine or not genuine sure. but uh, but because the process itself was meddled with um right. then that that's that did not uh, that actually uh, prevented us from the opportunity to see through this right, right. so the question of what actually happened hmm. in the actual complaint as raised by uh, the 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 woman uh, that we never got to see right Understood. but at the same time the second view is uh, if this one case is capable of shaking up our faith uh, i can then put 100 different cases to sure. reinstill that faith again right of course and of course. Uh, once again we cannot and should not and are definitely not in the position to afford to use this case as an excuse if tomorrow something happens in your organization or with you or against you right and you you will not be able to use it as a defense mechanism that look at what happened in you know the justice bogois case uh, and yeah. what they did because so you uh, can't just uh, you know shirk away your responsibility of uh, you know having following the due process exactly i mean you it, can't just say that it's not an argument that will prevent you you know so for <laughs> for Completely. for conversation sake yes i have heard so many people saying that see that's why we don't believe in the legal system see that's why we don't care whether to follow the law or not but uh, i uh, i i will wait for those people to actually use this argument if ever there is something that comes against them because when legal system works it works i mean you sure. you, you cannot you cannot start doubting it because of instances like these agreed agreed uh, so tell me something pallavi i mean uh, is there a way this posh act you know uh, can it be made gender neutral can it be uh, made, made applicable to both the genders because the posh act itself all, let's is, use the word all genders yes all genders so i'm so sorry yeah all genders uh, you're absolutely right uh, so all genders not just women uh, is it possible are companies doing it already are they making it uh, completely gender neutral is, is it are companies doing it so uh they are doing it that's uh, one of the main philosophy of what we have at ungender also that yeah. uh, we work with companies to implement the mechanisms of uh, 
Bosch Act in a gender neutral manner right. uh, with a fundamental belief that uh, what is good for one gender should be good for everybody out there and at least in one place that we can uh, or the law has given you the opportunity is that here is a guideline right yes. this is a guideline nowhere in the law uh, it has been written for Bosch Act that you cannot so as long as it is not prohibiting you right yeah. it is not saying that you cannot have also raise complaints of sexual harassment in workplace nobody is stopping uh, the companies to take this decision and we talked about it last time also swapnil that uh, and this is a question um it's yeah. very interesting and uh, pleasing you know to hear from the leaders themselves that uh, can we include men also and that gives me a very good opportunity to say that forget about just men and women you should just uh, uh, all, gender. all genders all gender right exactly. because yeah. and that's yeah. very much possible there are certain things in the policy that you can actually uh, you will need to devise certain uh, you know different parallel mechanisms for um, so for example the appeal for the appeal uh, the cases have to go to the industrial tribunal now even if you make a policy gender neutral uh, any other complainant other than a woman they cannot go to the industrial tribunal so internally you have to create parallel mechanisms for that but that's not that difficult to do but that's for And employers what about employers yes exactly but that's for employers but well, let's say you know there is a, there is a, 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 a you know a, a male colleague who's been who's been sexually harassed by by a female superior you know quid uh, pro mm -hmm. mm -hmm. or uh, you know a hostile working environment it can happen obviously it's it's a minority but it can happen so if there is no committee within the organization because the organization has followed the posh act completely and they just have mm -hmm. a redress mechanism for women so what does a, a man do in such cases is the district officer uh, option open to the, to the man in that case no it is not so that uh, that officer only has the responsibilities under the posh act 2013 only okay. and uh, okay. this is one of the gap uh, that still needs to be filled at least from the legal angle what mm. uh, uh, one of you know few of the best companies that i'm working with uh, what they have been doing is uh, they create uh, if they do not want to make posh gender neutral they have these code of conduct policies where they will include uh, harassment and other form of uh, uh, you know discriminatory uh, practices and create sure. mechanisms around it yeah yeah, yeah. i uh, no i think that's that's very positive i think i've i've been reading up a little a little on that as well and some companies are making it gender neutral i think it's uh obviously the posh act is is like a base law i mean you have to adhere to at least that that is for protection of one gender uh, because yes. that gender has been historically oppressed uh, uh, but but doesn't mean that companies can't use that as a guideline and uh, apply it uh, for all genders in this case right for all genders you can look at the role that it will play right we have arrived or we arrived at the need for preventing or joy protecting women in the workplace environment based on series of incidents that kept happening absolutely right? and the uh, women voicing it out right. right now when companies make a gender neutral policy and they start receiving complaints they are also keeping a track of how many men are also bringing out these concerns so exactly. 10 years down the line we will have a very stable a uh, ground to push the case forward and uh, why wait for 10 years if more and more companies are making gender neutral policy and their awareness session also focus on men and yeah. other genders and uh, other genders feel open and free enough to start bringing out their concerns also because sadly the way society has conditioned men yeah. Yeah. Uh, they are yet to come out and share you know Absolutely. their actual experiences Absolutely. of how they feel when they are sexually harassed then we will have a very stable data to actually push the case forward and say that uh, sexual harassment is not a gender issue but it's a power issue which yeah. is exactly what ugc did ugc yeah. in their industry specific guidelines for educational institutions said that we don't identify sexual harassment as a problem which is associated with gender we are look at it more from a minority and of a power you know struggle power issue power equation and yeah power equation exactly absolutely so what is stopping other industries to do that absolutely i completely agree with that in fact uh, so uh, you know one thing is very clear you know it can be applied to both, for, for all genders not both gender i mean and uh, 
parties doing it there is precedence uh, uh, you know what about you know there are there is a, a, a comment i see a user taking it up and i'll i'll bring it up hence uh, although it's, it's still uh, you know uh, you know it's it's a minority normally uh, uh, you know what it, it does the act today uh, deal with uh, false accusations and that's some something a, a user has uh, you know a viewer has raised that uh, so is there a mechanism under which under this act where you know a false accusation is is also dealt with is is there a way you know that you know that's addressed right so uh, i i'll take 2 minutes to walk uh, you through the investigation process right yeah, so yeah, when a complaint comes in uh, most of the people how the conversation has been happening is that it will just require one statement from a woman to yeah. say that i have been sexually harassed and a decision will be taken and committee will get activated and uh, the person will be either asked to leave the company or a reputation will be created for that individual yeah. Yeah. this is not how it works in reality in fact the uh, uh, the law has laid down very specific structured manner in which these complaints should be handled so if i approach a committee and i say i have been sexually harassed the committee is actually going to ask me details of it that's what i yes. was referring to that the, the detailed description of what i have gone through is very much required very important. it uh, yeah. it 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 does uh, feel like uh, a further trauma sometimes especially for individuals who you know who have mostly genuine you know experience yes i agree but we also explain to them that this is something which will work in your favor because tomorrow you will not get the opportunity to provide further details right yeah. so once we receive the details then we are able to see through and uh, you know committee is trained to assess um how how the story or how the narrative has been laid out who yeah. are the people who have witnessed it and so on and so forth then the same document is forwarded to the uh, person who is accused and their response is asked and they so, are given the opportunity to provide their version of what exactly yeah. happened yeah and only after that has been received the committee <sighs> identifies that okay now we need to make sure that these two people are able to clarify or cross question examine each other's evidences and witnesses and so on and so forth it's a very structured process just imagine going to a court with a complaint uh, the court is not going to decide just on the basis of uh, you know what you have said it is going to do a thorough investigation into the matter absolutely the order of it or sequence of it exactly I absolutely guess. and the committee is bound by principles of natural justice i know that all these things sound very good when i say it and you know on paper also but yeah. that is exactly how the it is it's important to understand how the law has intended whether people are yeah. following it or not is a different thing altogether of course so the law has demanded the committee to actually work in under the principles of natural justice natural which justice. says that you have to be unbiased you have to be fair you have to be transparent you cannot take one person's side even if the complaint is extremely grave you have to till the last point keep assessing keep uh investigating that whether the complaint that has come is an actual complaint it's a misunderstanding or it's a frivolous complaint these okay. are the three things that you have to assess now okay. the third part which is the frivolous complaint is been added very specifically under this act which says that if a complaint is found to be a frivolous one or to be filed under a malicious intent then the committee closes that case and the reverse investigation against the woman Oh, okay. will be initiated okay okay and whatever That's could have been the consequences against the accused the person against whom the complaint came uh, that same extreme consequences are now applicable to the woman also for filing okay. a false complaint Understood. right so but this information is not circulated it's not this there. information it's not. is it's it's not there and people think that uh, now even if i compliment a woman at work uh, she will go and she will tell the committee that she feels sexually harassed oh, and a lot of then, such, lot of such misconceptions flying around and people have been saying you know that uh, uh, you know uh, if i if i reprimand uh, a woman employee uh, I, uh, i she may file a sexual harassment uh, you know allegation against me i mean that that's that's one of the weirdest weirdest things uh, that i heard but apparently that's not very uncommon and uh, you know which means that organizations are not doing a great job at, at making people under, understand as to what constitutes a sexual harassment both the genders 
and what doesn't i mean obviously there is there, there it's a workplace sometimes it's a high pressure workplace uh, you uh, shouting itself is, is is wrong of course but i'm saying you know uh, if there is a professional how you shout is important right how you shout and it's, it's important. important for both the genders it's all, for all genders in fact so it it doesn't matter and and secondly also you know uh, in a high pressure environment there will be there is a case of argumentation uh, there is a mm-hmm. case of difference of opinion that does not constitute sexual harassment that's something that you uh, need to uh, uh, you know more intimately uh, because uh, yeah so i think that that, that is a very uh, that's a very clear uh, uh, you know one one important thing that i wanted to because you touched upon it uh, let's say it's an, it's a company sponsored event you know and the uh, uh, mm-hmm. it's a com- company sponsored event so you're not within the office uh, you know uh, office premises you're outside does the posh act uh, you know uh, you know ensure that the employee is covered under the employer's guidelines even there in in a company sponsored event which is outside or it could be a you know a party office party yes so to to actually because once again we are not having enough discussions about uh, where all posh is applicable and where all your conduct is uh, being uh, you know monitored or you are supposed to monitor your own conduct uh, yeah. is wherever your work is taking you or wherever you are present because yeah. your work requirement or your role assignment has uh, asked you to be there uh, right. this could be uh, your main office places yeah. which you usually identify that this is my office this is my workplace this could be the extended workplaces uh, yeah. office parties networking events uh, even team building activities even uh, you know uh, uh, our teams birthday parties in some club or some bar uh, going for a client meeting client visit vendor visit offsite uh, events and activities wherever you are in this extended mode and then third thing your virtual spaces wherever your conversation is happening wherever your interaction is happening be it any medium you are on email you are on um, instagram live you are on uh, facebook you are on uh, you know slack hangout whichever medium it is even whatsapp um if the reason for the interaction or the association is work related then your conduct is under the parameters of workplace sexual harassment and and which we find very difficult for people to understand because suddenly there is this fear that if it's an office party and then we are drinking because how our corporate work culture is also evolving is no longer about a 9 to 5 job i remember my so, father even till this day he will go to office in the morning around 6 o'clock 7 o'clock he will come straight home you know that's, sure. that's how it is but we are no longer living in those times anymore we have it's a very it's a very uh, uh, how would i say it's a very mixed a uh, work culture that we have where when we want to build a family kind of environment also but at the same time we want discipline as well and we want people to adhere to their kpis also and they, we want them to have fun also and then we want everyone to respect each other also no so obviously there's a clash there's of too many values there <laughs> there's a clash of lot of things and uh, you know traditional values modern values workplace workplace cultures and uh, you know home cultures all that you know it's 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 it's, it's a all mismatch all that is there and swapnil you wouldn't believe the funniest conversation that i have had in our sessions is that uh, uh, uh is my company telling me to not to bring my complete self to work because the minute we start talking about these sexist jokes or you know uh, even the language that we have right the bad words right. because they have yeah. become so much part right. of our working style right that if there is aggression then we have to right. use these curse words and uh, sometimes these i, I don't even yeah. think people know the meanings of these words right <laughs> we 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 have uh, we have innovated new words uh, um, and people actually complain that do you want us to leave our self at home complete you know, self this is me i have heard excuses from individual saying that this is the warmth in me that makes me hug everyone and pat them on their back and this and that oh and uh, it's 
it's these are the nuances that we have to address because uh, uh, there also subconsciously the power plays into picture right okay. i have asked these people that if you will meet someone who is very senior to you and someone who is in a very high position or higher power authority will yeah. you do the same thing that you will wink at that person and you will do a pat on the back and you know you will hug that person without seeking their permission the exactly. answer is consent actually is very no important. exactly consent is but, so important and that's but what people subconsciously miss. subconsciously for the consent also we have started looking at the with the power play is still there you know that if right. we are above our power is more than the person that we are dealing with this comes naturally to us but it will not right. come naturally to us if we are dealing with somebody uh, i have not seen yet a startup in uh, you know entrepreneur looking for funding going to their investor and winking in the first meeting it doesn't happen right because you need doesn't, something doesn't from them that. does right? have to so, work that way power equation so right people are yeah. people are capable of leaving their warmth when it's convenient <laughs> of course when it's convenient right? to them i agree i agree uh, uh, so in fact uh, you know uh, so very interesting things we've been talking about uh, pallavi uh, you know how how uh, what what are the powers of you know you you talked about when when let's say uh, a person is found guilty of sexual harassment by the internal complaints committee uh, what kind of punishment punishments are meted out is it always uh, a dismissal from the company because that would mean that you know uh, a lot of a lot of uh, uh, you know accused accused people they they would instead of dealing with the problem they might as well quit the company go and, and you know they'll never deal with that problem because you quit one company you go to another organization the pro- the thing is the major problem which which may be a character trait which which is you know uh, making you indulge in what constitutes sexual harassment that is not getting resolved so uh, our company is also looking at remedial actions or is it just punishment uh, through the icc so there are two stages of how icc investigates when a complaint has come to them and uh, that's why there's also a reason why a couple of years back after the law came into picture they yeah. modified the name and said that instead of internal complaints committee you can also keep it as internal committee you know okay. so that okay. not every conversation that you bring to the committee needs to come across as if you're actually filing a very serious or grave level of you know complaint to them okay. Okay. so the okay. first stage is that what exactly is the need or what exactly is the purpose of reaching out to this committee so let's yeah. say there's something there's something that uh, you know uh, uh, I I'm going to take you in the example here so Abhinav don't mind uh yeah. there's something that uh, you know you have said and uh, I did not find it comfortable right mm-hmm. um of course in the awareness session we teach people how to have this clarity of communication so that you can deal with it right, right. but even right. if that is not possible you can approach the committee to facilitate this conversation also so one very important thing that ic always does when a complaint comes to them is to understand that why it has been brought to us what exactly is the uh, seek here and most of the time what we have heard is i just want you from the complaint inside i just want you to let this person know that this behavior is making me uncomfortable and most of the time uh, people have actually realized you know or that through this the we call this process the process of conciliation you of know course. that uh, we we the ic acts as a mediator and mm-hmm. it makes both people sit in the room across the table and we ask them that okay this is a concern of this complainant this woman and uh, what have you got to say and then they say that we never knew mm-hmm. or they may say that okay i knew i realized she felt bad but because she did not come to me directly i am willing to apologize now not always a person's apology may be equivalent to what the uh, complainant had in mind because uh, sometimes the offenses are very grave we have come across instances where people have tried to uh, uh, you know uh, 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 actually tried to outrage the modesty of a woman in a very extreme manner and there have been assault cases also coming in now there an apology may not suffice right so there the there the consequences are a little graver that uh, as a company's policy internally if they have identified that this degree of offense if it comes out then this person needs to no longer be part of the organization but let's talk about other uh, soft you know softer level or uh, maybe not so repeat level uh, yeah. a company is not going to fire someone or ask somebody to leave because uh, there was a pat on the back or there was a 
uh, there was a verbal compliment that was given or there was a hug that was given so committees are always looking at the gravity of the offense and then it has to be equivalent commensurate to the, to the, to to the, the consequence yes. absolutely and sometimes we explain this to women also because uh, we have had instances where a person has walked in saying that uh, uh, you know you need to have this person leave the company and uh, that's where the committee has also actually sat down with that person and explained to them that how it is also in violation of the law because yeah. tomorrow uh, see the law has been very carefully uh, with all its yeah. gaps and ambiguities it has uh, very smartly and uh, you know taken care of some of the misuses that can happen so uh, it the principle of natural justice fair investigation fair hearing how can you just listen to one person and take a decision it the still principles has of natural at the end of the day natural justice at the end of the day it's the committee which decides understood understood so in fact uh, you know it's 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 a it's, it's uh, you know we just have very little time now pallavi uh, to wrap this all up in fact i'm requesting my uh, audience audience members to also you know sending send in questions if they have any comments any questions for you pallavi uh, you know mm -hmm. uh, so one thing that you know the conversations like these are very important pallavi because uh, you know uh, there is there is obviously it gives more clarity as to what uh, there are a lot of myths that people have you know and a lot yes. of that is because poor communication by the institutions as to what constitutes right. sexual harassment you know what the consequences could be there is no clarity on uh, you know uh, how can you complain and what can you do in case something like that happens uh, right. there is not enough enough uh, and ultimately uh prevention is one thing but there's also the cultural thing that you know people have to adopt and lot lot more companies have right. to come up with uh, you know uh, they they have to come up with programs and sensitization programs mm -hmm. which help correct the culture rather than you know uh, you know just just looking at it as if that's one responsibility under the law right you know uh, so i would just want you to you know give us a two minute brief just wrap things up while uh, we wait some questions if there are questions we can address them at the end yeah mm -hmm. so um i i i want to go a little back on uh, you know the importance of that companies are not sharing enough information and uh, most of the companies are not even putting in the, the dedicated time that is required right there's so much information that you need to put out you need to you need to discuss what exactly sexual harassment is and the definition of sexual harassment can be one for one con you know company and industry and yeah. uh, something else for another industry right. Uh, right uh what what is apple what is acceptable uh for comment or making comments and observing uh female colleagues uh, you know dresses and their stockings and their makeup and uh, how how pleasant they look uh is very much acceptable in certain industries hospitality and others uh while it's completely irrelevant in manufacturing and other environments right so this understanding this conversation for what exactly is the definition of sexual harassment and misconduct that will be there in our company as our culture uh, needs to be drilled down and needs to right. happen because that's creating a lot of fear that's why we have uh, people saying that we don't want to hire women anymore that's yeah. when it happens that we don't want to have meetings with women anymore now i have heard people who actually if they have to meet a female yeah. they take one more person from their end because they don't yeah. want to do one to one meetings with women anymore because they don't know what uh, will offend them yeah right so understanding of what exactly it is needs to be very open and very thorough there yeah second yeah. thing which is creating a lot of uh, misconception and fear in people is not knowing the way the investigation will be done like right. we touched upon it a while ago right there's so many other things that people still do not know uh for example you know uh just because you are the accused does not mean that you do not have any rights you yes. have equal rights till the time the investigation is uh, going to happen the yep. same way that i tell women as complainants that go ahead and complain do not worry about the fear or you know or losing your job because as yeah. long as there is a pending investigation the company actually cannot ask you to cannot leave, fire you. cannot fire you 
right uh, we also tell uh, men that do not think that it will be a one sided investigation because you have all the right to ask for the conversations which are happening but this has yeah. never been communicated to them right. oh, in in a limited hour of awareness session for one and two hours how much yeah. can we actually expect even the facilitator to communicate to people absolutely absolutely right and third thing which is not happening or which is people are not aware about is that uh, you uh, you do not need to worry about the the legal fees here even if it's a legal matter even if we are saying icc is an equivalent of civil court body you do not need to have a legal representation there and uh, that's how another way in which the law has taken care of things and there is a way for you so another thing that people actually think is that uh, uh, this no use going to the internal committee and complaining about it because these are people who are within the organizations right right, right how right. internal committees are formed is yeah. mostly people the majority uh, are from the organization only and the law has said that there has to be one external member right. who needs to be part of it sure. so people need to know that the board or the employer base or individuals who are equivalent to um, who are equivalent to promoters of a particular entity they cannot be part of this uh, i've got pallavi joining again so i will be back i think we missed couple of questions we will have to so, request people to ask them again yeah no so we will uh, so in fact i do remember a couple of them so in fact instagram live allows it an hour of uh, you know so uh, no worries uh, so in fact okay. you 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 were you were talking about uh, uh, i think you were talking about the the rights of you know also the victims in such cases and you know yeah so Uh, which is very know, important so to know right because uh, that's the biggest misconception that people have that only women as a complainant have all the right and have all the rights the uh, and men are considered uh, as uh, you know the, the all the men are considered as perpetrators and they have no say in it all we receive so many in fact ungender helps uh, and advises so many uh, individuals uh, uh, you know men who have been accused of sexual yeah. harassment yeah. and uh, we educate them on the process we guide them on the process as much as we guide the guide the women on the yeah. process also because uh, yeah. rights are created for both or all both. genders that we are dealing with and uh, um, sadly the education is not happening in such a manner right. Right. so right. that's also one of the agenda right. that we have taken up that people should know these absolutely i think principles of natural justice are ingrained in the law and uh, you know that's something that uh, you know it's not been communicated properly by the organization so couple of questions in fact uh, you know one of uh, one of the questions that came about uh, uh, you know was about relationships at workplace um, mm -hmm. because obviously if it is a you know there are specific uh, sexual harassment guidelines if it is you know a boss and a subordinate kind of you know right. two, two people so can you throw a little more light on that how are organizations dealing with that you know from from a practical experience so um considering the kind of cases that we have uh, seen coming in the you know in the media um if you will notice the pattern most of them actually have been about uh, the relationship there was an existence of a relationship and then after some time it not working out for whatever reason yeah right people drift apart people don't was, hold up was, on their promises yeah. or uh, they just change their mind right uh, uh, for reason uh, we have seen enough evidences yeah personal relationships going sour or not going the way they were intended to be uh, do come across and uh, become uh, examples of stalking of persistent messaging of uh, uh, indecent behavior and so on and so forth and here thereby people think that they fall under the category of workplace sexual harassment Yeah. Now corporates have realized that this is something that they cannot control, right? And uh, we also realize the role of power hierarchy here, wherein yeah. uh, uh, people who say that uh, if that person did not like me or did not want to be with me, then why did she not say it earlier or why did he not say earlier, right? And the power dynamics here do not allow an individual to express their true self. Uh, there have been enough, uh, you know, conversations about it. 
in the workplaces. So corporates are dealing it by actually creating guidelines for their workship, uh, your workplace policies, where uh, relationships with any power uh, uh, misequation uh, yeah. are actually not uh, encouraged and are uh, prohibited. You know, mm -hmm. and uh, by saying the word prohibited, uh, even if the two people decide not to. Uh, declare it because there you are entering into the privacy, you know, of two people who are working in your uh, uh, in your company. But by being it prohibited, then at least uh, there is a violation of one of the company's policy that is already happening. And tomorrow, at least you cannot bring it back as a as a form of sexual harassment to the internal committee because there was an existing uh, guideline that was there and you violated it. Second so Sorry, sorry, go ahead. No, no, you complete and then I'll no. Second thing that corporates are also concerned about is uh, the, you know, is the kind of uh, workplace culture that they are creating because at one point uh, you have a very um, friendly and uh, a very comfortable work environment that you want to give and then the next minute you want to create this uh, line that says that you can be friends, you can yeah. be very good friends, but then you cannot become uh, romantically involved with each other. There, yeah. uh, the corporates are actually looking back on their, uh, the companies that we have worked for, and I, you know, I'm aware of, they're looking back at their work timings also, because before you declare something like this, you also need to make sure that your people have their personal lifetime also. You cannot have people walking in uh, your office uh, 12, 14 hours, hours a day, a day and, 12, right, 16 hours a day, and then expect them uh, to find, uh, and we are dealing with very young audience. Exactly. Completely. Agree. Absolutely. Right. So companies first have to first they are fixing their work timings and their uh, uh, work uh, culture, culture, and then they are declaring it that okay with our clients, with people that you are associated with, and especially where there is a power dynamics involved. Yeah. If it's an equal, you can still go ahead, but. When you bring it to the committee, we have had instances where two people, even in the equal, uh, you know, power dynamics, uh, if their relationship had not worked out and they have brought it to the committee, the committee has actually politely declined it because, uh, uh, to be very honest, to get intimately involved was never part of your care. Mm. Mm. You, you were asked to come to the company to perform certain tasks with certain responsibilities and uh, all the responsibilities the company can still take uh, charge and, you know, own up if there is any misconduct that happens with you. Mm. That's mm. where the workplace safety policies come into picture. But a company cannot look into your personal life and personal decisions, even if you choose to actually engage with your, any of your colleagues. So this kind of clarity is being established by devising the workplace relationship and interpersonal policies also. Same thing with the office parties, same thing with alcohol guidelines. I mean, it's surprising the number of guideline documents that we are creating for workplaces now because all these things are eventually becoming or being found out as the cause of some incident yeah. that has happened. Some incident, which which can lead to a complaint, uh, you know, on the, in the IC. Uh, so, I mean, just just one last thing there. I mean, is it is it prudent for companies to to prohibit instead of saying, let's say, you know, to 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 employees who were uh, who were uh, you know working together, not romantically involved initially, and then over a period of time they become romantically involved. When they become romantically involved, I mean, is it is it prudent for companies to prohibit rather than saying that you know you have to highlight it at the, the moment you guys become pro, pro, uh, you know romantically involved and then you know we'll have to separate your power dynamics completely we can't have you work in the same department i mean i know it's, it's not I, practical no i'm it's laughing not. because in today's times of nil uh, people also do not know whether they are just hooking up ah, or they are just dating or are they now in a relationship or are in a living so, People yeah. also do not know, right? The stages of relationship are not as simple as they used to be earlier. Right? So, uh, to wait for people to themselves, uh, maybe they'll be living together for two years and they will still not call each other uh, romantically involved. They may just have a platonic relationship, right? Uh, the company sure. cannot wait. And uh, here the larger cannot. damage that we are looking at is that if one person who is uh, junior to you and uh, you are the senior person and uh, 
uh, whatever kind of association that has extended beyond the professional association has developed, it's uh, it's inherent that there will be some form of bias that you will be extending, some form of favoritism of that you'll be extending, and that is of not course. good for the morale of the other team members. Other, and other that's why members, companies yeah. are taking this rigid step. Of course, it depends yeah. from industry to industry. A lot of industries do not even care about it. They're very okay with whatever comes their way, but at least they're making an informed decision. Yeah, no, no, of course, uh, from a sexual harassment perspective, it becomes important for the IC to, to make a clear differentiation as to what can, because, you know, things can go go bad, as you, as you rightly point out. Uh, one other question that was raised uh, was, uh, do you see more companies uh, today, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, bringing in more gender neutral uh, sexual harassment policies? Uh, do you see that as a trend uh, amongst people that you're working with? I mean, amongst companies that you're working with? Are, is, there a, is there a concerted effort to bring policies which are gender neutral rather than, you know, only, you know, fulfilling uh, the needs of the female uh, colleagues? Yes, um, uh, we we are actually seeing a very positive and growing trend wherein companies come with this uh, intent that uh, uh, we would like to make it gender neutral. And the sure. only time that we have seen companies not adopting it is because of they have very large employee base and they're concerned about the number of complaints that their internal committee members will then end up handling. Because and at the end of the day, these internal committee members are not specifically hired for this role. Right. They are senior people from the organization who are already having a lot of responsibilities and are yes. going to be looking into these investigations. That's the only deterrent for them. Otherwise, this, this, this is a very positive thing to see and how, you know, companies are adopting gender neutrality here. Fantastic. Which I think opens room for so many conversations. I mean, we are living does. in the time of Section 377, right? Uh, yeah. Wherein we should be having these conversations and we should be having uh, uh, more conversations about how men feel sexually harassed and giving them the comfort and letting them come out of it and how how it happens for the, uh, for you know, for the gender that... Uh, gender spectrum that we don't even understand right now. Oh, absolutely. Except for the few conversations that we Clearly, we are incapable. We are not equipped to talk about that also. And, and you know, we are not equipped. Uh, you are absolutely right. In fact, so that is one of the things that we want to do at Loudest is, is you know, have more such conversations, pick out threads because you know the wider topic we, we've obviously touched upon, and you know we're now picking up threads from from the wider topic in the same context. And today was was one of those attempts. This is clearly going to be you know, a series of such conversations that we are going to organize. Uh, so thank you so much. Thank you so much, Pallavi, for taking time out. It was it was fabulous to have this chat and this conversation. Thank you. Thank and, you. Uh, you, know, you know, and uh, we will, uh, you know, be, be, uh, we are so glad that, you know, there are, for our viewers, for our followers, uh, you know, you could you could obviously bring out a lot of facets which are less which are less understood because you know there's not much information going around. There's a lot of confusion certainly, right. but not much information. So that, thank you so much, Pallavi, and uh, th thank you everybody. Bye bye. Uh, yes, thank you everybody. Joining. If there are more questions, Vapnil, where can they reach out? Should they write so to they you? Can, they write yeah. to so, in fact, uh, what we will do is we'll circulate this video, uh, you know, mm -hmm. on our YouTube channel and. Uh, uh, you know, uh, they can they can always write to uh, to us or or Pallavi. We'll will have have the contact details in that video. We'll embed the contact Great. details. All right. Great. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Vapnil. Have a good evening. Yeah. And you to too. everyone also. Yes. Have a lovely weekend. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye.